Well, hello friends, reloaders, internet wanderers. However you found your way here today, I welcome you to the channel. This video is going to be the first part in a series for the CS 7.2 build. And in the words of the famous poet and philosopher M. Trainer, it's all about that base. And today we're going to be putting together the classifier base, which is the heart and soul of this project. So let's jump right into it. On the table, I have all the parts that we're going to need for this video and, and this build to build the classifier base. So let's take a look at that. The first thing we're going to need to do is flip this over and remove any supports that are on the base. This one's already had the supports removed, but they should really just be in that camera hole. So the first thing we're going to install is the heat set insert for the proximity sensor. And we're going to need to get the proximity sensor ready as we're going to use it as part of the installation. And you can see this bag comes with some extra ferrules if you bought the kit. And those ferrules can be used to um, shorten the wire and, and crimp it back on. But I'm going to go ahead and remove all these nuts at this point because we're not going to need those right now. So what we're going to need is our proximity sensor heat set insert, which is an M8 by one insert. And you'll notice one side is smooth and the other side here is rough. The smooth side we're going to press into the hole. Now it's, it's going to be a tight fit. You might not be able to push it in by hand. I gave it a shot here and wasn't able to do it. So I flipped it over and put a little bit of pressure on it. You'll kind of hear it snap into place once you get it. And only that first part will snap down into hole into the hole. But now at least we're level and we're ready to go. So next we'll get our soldering iron. And all you really need to do here is apply the heat evenly and put a good amount of pressure. And so this takes uh, roughly five to 10 seconds, depending on how hot you have your iron. I sort of put mine on a medium heat and uh, once you start heating this just keep in mind that the heat's going to keep transferring into that nut and through it and so once it starts getting hot and melting put a little bit more pressure to get it in there as quickly as possible. At this point we're going to want to grab our sensor and thread it in and we're going to use this to make sure that we put our heat set insert in flush and we want to make sure that the proximity sensor is perpendicular uh, to the base. This way we can just make sure it goes in straight and it will soak up some of the heat from the, the nut. So after a few seconds you can unscrew that and then what you want to do is inspect in this hole and see if there's any actually melted plastic in the way and this one actually has a little bit of melted plastic there on the left side. And so what I'm going to do is just get my drill bit here. This is a M8 drill bit and just kind of ream it out a little bit to get rid of some of the plastic. We don't want that plastic interfering with the proximity sensor as you try to thread it up. It will create a problem. But now that that's in there flush, we can continue on with our build. So the first thing we're going to put in is this axle. It's a M6 by 80 millimeter screw and if you're having trouble finding it, it you know flip it over and, and take a look. I'm going to thread this in a little bit by hand and then use my uh, electric drill to get this thing going a little bit faster. Now it's important you don't over tighten these or strip these out. I have the clutch on mine set to one then I can just kind of use the hand screwdriver to make sure it's nice and snug but you don't want to over rotate this or strip it out. Next we're going to take our M6 by 30 screw and we're going to screw that into this hole here. This is for the cam shaft axle. Again I'm going to use my drill. It's a little faster. Now 
Next, we're going to install the tension cam spring mount, and it's an M3 by 18 socket head screw. This one here goes in the corner, the bottom, well, in this orientation, bottom left corner. And you'll see on the bottom of the base, there's a little bit of a recess for it. So I'm going to use my hand screwdriver with fast forward to get that in there quickly. Uh, the next part is an M4 by 8 and this is the cam stop and so it will go right next to the cam axle that we previously installed and this one goes from the top to the bottom. Now we're going to install our proximity sensor. So I'm going to quickly thread this one on and just make sure everything is still level and flush. If not, I can always add a little bit more heat and, and straighten things out, but it looks good. I just need to go ahead and add one of the lock nuts on here. And so we're going to thread this in until it's flush with the top of the base. We don't want it protruding above the top and we don't want it too low or it won't pick up the brass as it falls. So the best way to do this is to kind of screw it into place and then take your feed wheel and put some pressure on it and make sure it's not catching at all. And in this case, I'm going to thread it up a little bit until it catches. I can feel it catch and then start to back it out until it's not catching anymore. Then I'll just lock down the screw the best I can without changing the position of the sensor. Um, here I just got my needle nose to lock it down a little bit tighter. And then one last check just to make sure that thing isn't sticking up. So now it's time to install our motor. And so the important thing here is that we orient the motor facing the right direction. So we're going to push it all the way towards the back and we want the connector sort of facing forward or towards the proximity sensor. And this is the best orientation I've found for running the wiring. And you'll see that towards the end as we connect all the wires and route them through the base. So the first thing, we just got to put all four screws in. You don't want to put them in too tight. Um, we're going to try to back this towards the back at this point. But later on, we'll loosen this up a little bit and slide it forward until the gear engages fully. Next, we're going to install our set screws. So we have two of those. These are M3 by 16. And there's one on the side of the camera, and it's meant to lock in the camera. And I put my finger in there just so I want to screw it in until I can feel it protruding into that hole a little bit. The next one we're going to put on the other side, and this is for the drop tube. Same thing. We'll screw it in until we can kind of feel it touching a little bit and maybe back it out. Now let's go ahead and put our camera in. And so if you bought the kit, the camera will come like this. Hopefully if you didn't, then you've already built it because you'll need that to continue. But there's two divots on the camera and those align with the two M6 heads here. And so I like to position the camera so the fan's facing out. You can just push this till it's almost flush. It doesn't go all the way flush, but you'll see it gets in there pretty good. At this point we just need to tighten down that lock screw and you want to be sure not to over tighten this screw because it will bend the camera body so you just need it maybe a turn or half turn but just double check it make sure it's not popping out and that's the only pressure we need and the same thing goes for the drop tube. So the drop tube is pretty thin if you thread this in too much, you'll definitely bend the tube. So here, I'll just back it out until it pops in and then give it a quarter turn. It's still kind of spinning or turning, so another quarter turn. And that's all we need here. Now we're going to install our homing sensor. So this one was pre-built and that's how they come with the kit. There's another instruction video of how to make this as well. But this just installs, you'll see there's a square hole in the sensor and a square hole here in the corner of the classifier base. So we just really line those up. And then we're going to use two of the M3 by eight socket heads and screw those down. Don't over torque these. We'll kind of 
leave a little bit of place so that we can slide the sensor around after it's all done. And you want to start with this pushed all the way back as far as possible. So once you get that pushed back, you can lock this down a bit. And if we need to adjust it a little bit forward, that's not a problem. Now we're going to install our tension cam. So you want to check it first, make sure we got rid of all of the 3D printing supports. There was a little bit left on this one. And uh, we're going to take our tension cam shim and thread this over the M6 by 30 or the tension cam axle. Now this should be something you can do by hand. In, in this case, mine is pretty loose. Actually, when they're appropriately tight, they, they should lock down, but this one just keeps spinning and I can see it didn't really thread very well. So I might have to go back and reprint this and I would just print it at 99%. But go ahead and slide this over the tension cam over the top of the shim and now we need to actually um, install our spring and to make this easier I take one of the ends and bend out the loop a little bit and this will allow me to slide it over the little knob on the tension cam otherwise it's a bear to get on there once that's there we can put the tension cam on and then slide this over the tension cam mount screw and then we're going to take an M3 nut and just slide that or thread that down. This should move pretty easy and be under tension the whole time. Now I'm going to set this to the side and we're going to go ahead and build our feed gear and so we'll take the flange, you notice it has four holes, the feed gear has four holes and we're going to take our M3 by 12 Phillips head screws and we're just going to put those in those four holes. They should pretty much be flush to the surface. Maybe they protrude just a little bit. And then we have our lock screws or our set screws. Those are little M3 set screws. We installed those and I want to make sure that one of those is touching the flat surface on the motor shaft. So I just push this down until it stops. You can push it down a little bit further so that it goes into the 3D print area, but it's not necessary. You don't want to over tighten these. These are little screws and you'll strip them out. Most likely you'll strip out the socket so you can't actually remove the screw or loosen it later. Now we're ready to install our feed wheel. Now this one already has the bearings in it. I didn't do that on video, but really you just press these down in. And we're going to put our feed wheel over. Now this is actually the wrong orientation for the feed wheel. And you'll notice how the gear is at the bottom of the wheel. It needs to be at the top. Otherwise it will not mesh with the gear. So it's installed but you can see I'm not really getting a very good mesh with the feed gear there's a lot of space in between it in fact I can move them independently and that's not what we want so to fix this we need to loosen up the motor screws just a bit and push it into the gear so that it makes a good connection but we've got to take the wheel off so we can get to the one screw underneath it So now I'm going to put the wheel back on here and just push the motor forward until we get a good engagement on the gear. And you don't want to use a crazy amount of pressure here, uh, just enough to where it, it meshes. So I changed hands here so I can keep pressure, light pressure on the motor as I tighten down the screws. Then I'll have to take that wheel off and tighten the one underneath as well. Now we need to do the light shade and the, the light shade lock. And so this is two parts. The first part takes an M3 heat set insert. I use these inserts in places where I think it's either threading is going to be a problem or we're going to be using the threading a lot. And this is one of those places where we're using the threading quite a bit. 
And what I mean is every time we change the caliber wheel or the feed wheel, we'll have to thread this on and off. And so having a brass insert here is good. Now I'm using the M3 by eight socket head here by hand, just to make sure the threads are, are clear and level. And so this thing is still hot, so I can kind of move this around, but you can see I didn't really get it deep enough. It's still protruding. So I'm going to just take my soldering iron and press this in a bit more. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put one of these other M6 screws in, and that will make sure that I don't press it too deep. So I want to see, well, I did press that in too deep because I burnt the plastic a bit, but at least the it's still sliding on the M6 screw. Now I'll go ahead and push this in, and remember you're going to push it in on the flat side of the shade, and it will snap. It takes a bit of pressure. And this should rotate, but somewhat tightly. And we're done with the light shade. Now you can use the M3 by 8 screw that I included in the kit. I actually for my builds like to use thumb screws and so I buy you can buy aluminum thumb screws these are a pain to do by hand but you can buy these aluminum thumb screws from Ali or Amazon and they just make your build a lot nicer and cleaner unfortunately I didn't include those in the kit I couldn't get a good deal on them in bulk for my build here I'm gonna go ahead and use it though you don't really need to tighten these down very hard. It's just to keep it from going, from sliding up that axle. So just finger tight is good enough. Finally, we're going to install the pole mount. And you'll notice there's a side with a channel, and the side without the channel is the one that goes up. And so we're going to use our M6 by 30 screws here. I prefer to thread them both in a little bit before I tighten them down. Just makes it a little bit easier. Now it's time to run the wiring. <laughs> Before we do that, let's go ahead and hook up our sensor and our motor cable. So the sensor, we're just going to push the cable up through the square hole. It's a square connector. And this is going to be face up where the white wire is on the right. If you look at the connector, there's little clips and those should be facing up. Same thing goes for the motor cable. Um, we're going to go ahead and plug it that the clips on the on the connector face up. Just make sure it's seated in there really well. Now we can start running our wiring. So I'm going to put the more colorful wires towards the bottom of the channel. And then those wires that are black we'll put on the top of the channel. It just kind of gives it a better look. And then finally, you'll see that there's these holes in the channels that are for zip ties. These are little four inch zip ties. And I will go ahead and tie those down. At least I only did one for this video, but uh, you can use all three of the holes or there's actually a fourth one there as well. So this pretty much concludes the build for the classifier base. This is going to be ready to mount onto the pole, and we'll continue in the next video with building out the rest of the system. If you made it this far and yours looks as good as this, well, congratulations. So now that we're done with our classifier build, we're ready to move on to the next video. You'll find the links to the videos for all this build series in the description of this video. Um, in the next video, we're going to be covering building the sorter, which goes underneath the classifier. I'll see you there.